Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Garage Science. Today I'm going to be mixing up a new electrolyte solution for my copper plating bath. So we'll go through the step-by-step -step process of mixing the chemicals, which chemicals I use, how I mix them, the process by which I mix them, and also give you an example of some of the results I get out of this copper plating bath. Hopefully you'll be able to watch this video and avoid some of the simple, stupid little mistakes I made as I was doing this and uh, avoid some of that headache yourself if you do this. So some of the ingredients that we'll be using in this experiment is we'll be using distilled water, ZEP root kill, car battery acid, muriatic acid, and polyethylene glycol or PEG, also known as laxative. So the purpose of each ingredient it's important to use distilled water because of the distillation process removes a lot of the extra chemicals in the water. Uh, so you don't want to use tap water, uh, especially you don't want to use tap water because uh, most tap water has uh, quite a bit of chlorine in it. And if you do use tap water, you will notice uh, over time as you continue to add water to your bath uh, as some uh, steams off that your solution will actually turn green and that is because of the chlorine in the water. It's also going to uh, make your copper plating uh, much less even. It's going to make it a lot more rough and a lot more grainy and a lot more uh, hard so it'll be uh, a more brittle uh, plating and so you really want to avoid using um, tap water and go for the distilled water. It's pretty cheap. You get a gallon of it for like 75 cents at Walmart. For the ZEP root kill, uh, the reason you want to use that is because it contains copper sulfate pentahydrate. Uh, these are solid blue crystals uh, typically used if you're trying to uh, break down the uh, feces in your septic tank, uh, if you've got issues with that. Um, it's also uh, good if you're trying to kill tree stumps and that sort of thing, uh, hence the name ZEP root kill. Um, but what we want is uh, what this is going to be. This is going to be a copper sulfate sulfuric acid copper plating bath. And so the Zebrut Kill is like 99% copper sulfate pentahydrate. Next you're going to use uh, car battery acid. You're going to use this because it has a concentration of about 35% sulfuric acid. So that's a most dangerous chemical that we'll be using in this solution and the one that should be treated with a huge amount of respect. So definitely be careful as you're handling it. The purpose of the sulfuric acid is it adds something called uh, throwing power and it also uh, helps dissolve the um, copper electrodes so that way the copper can be transferred from the anode to the cathode or from your copper electrode to your part. So that high acid concentration breaks down the copper on your electrode and allows it to be moved through the solution uh, to your part. And what I mean by throwing power is throwing power is a term used in um, electroplating that basically determines um, how well a surface plates, how deep crevices you can get plating into, and how evenly plating can be spread out across the part. The other ingredient we'll be using is muriatic acid. Uh, the reason we want to use this is because it's about 35% hydrochloric acid. Uh, HCl and that is also an extremely powerful acid. Uh, we're only going to be using just a tad little bit of it so uh, you might even be able to get away without using this but um, again the recipe we're going to be following calls for uh, a little bit of muriatic acid and so definitely make sure that you're being careful with this as well. It also gasses off uh, pretty easily and uh, is really not good to inhale so work outside when you're mixing this chemical. And the last chemical we'll be using is polyethylene glycol or PEG. Uh, this is uh, basically we're going to use a laxative which is primarily composed of this polyethylene glycol and this acts as a smoothing agent uh, or leveling agent in the bath and so that will help your part come out more shiny and also help the part plate smoother across the surface. And it does that by controlling the, um, the electric field within the bath and uh, keeps it more level around uh, different areas with sharp corners and, and edges. 
The recipe we're using is actually uh, not one that I created myself. Uh, this came from a uh, robotics website uh, talking about uh, through-hole PCB uh, copper plating and uh, pulled the recipe off of that site which uh, was based off of the Think and Tinker website and uh, that's where uh, the components of this electrolyte uh, are derived from and so I'll put a link up to that site you can go on and check it out yourself if you want more details. Okay so the way we're going to mix these ingredients is uh, first off we're going to take uh, a gallon of the distilled water and we're going to put it in a pot and put it on the stove and get it to uh, boiling temperature. Uh, the reason we're going to do that is because once we pour the uh, copper sulfate uh, crystals in that hot water is going to help dissolve those crystals a lot faster. Go ahead and pour in uh, 500 grams of your uh, copper sulfate. That'll be about half of the container of copper sulfate. So once you have your hot water ready to go, go ahead and pour it in your five gallon bucket. I will be making about three gallons of this electrolyte today. We're not getting ultra, ultra uh, specific with the measurements. Again, you can refer to the recipe in the video description if you want the exact numbers. And you can use a spoon and start mixing it around. Uh, mixing just helps, again, dissolve those crystals a little faster. All right, once your copper sulfate is dissolved, go ahead and add a little bit more water to the solution and then let it cool. You don't want it to be uh, really hot uh, when we add the uh, car battery acid. So go ahead and let that cool a little bit. And it is very important that uh, you mix the car battery acid into the water rather than the water into the car battery acid. Uh, the reason for this is pouring water into a high concentration of battery acid can actually cause it to uh, react very violently. And you definitely don't want car battery acid uh, splashing around. Also make sure that while you're handling the acid that you're wearing safety glasses and gloves and uh, also a mask or a face shield uh, if you have available is really the most ideal. So for mixing the car battery acid go ahead and uh, just pour it in slowly and let it mix in slowly. If you can let it run down the, the wall of the, the container uh, again just so that way you're not splashing uh, then that's also best. Again the highest respect needs to be treated, uh, given to these chemicals. Okay, once we have our car battery acid mixed in, next we're going to mix in our muriatic acid. Uh, we're only going to mix in about we're going to mix in about two milliliters worth of muriatic acid, and so really you can think of two milliliters. Uh, just imagine that uh, how much it is, and just like I said, just add a dab of it. Again, not getting super uh, specific with our measurements here. And once we finish with that, we're going to go ahead and add our polyethylene glycol. Once again, not getting ultra specific with our measurements. Um, you can absolutely be specific with these measurements. You might even be able to get even better results than what I've been able to get. Uh, I just also wanted to show with this video that it doesn't take uh, a really huge amount of precision when you're mixing this. It's more important that you get the general ratio of these chemicals correct and that you are using the right chemicals uh, while you're building the solution. Alright, once you have all your chemicals mixed, uh, you can go ahead and transfer it to uh, the actual bucket that you're going to use for uh, electroplating. Uh, before I do that, I'll go ahead and give you a quick overview of how my uh, electroplating bath bucket works while it's empty so you can kind of see uh, how it's constructed. Okay, so the next step is going to be to actually put the electrolyte in the uh, five gallon bucket that's going to be in the electroplating bath. And so uh, you didn't get to see this in my electroplating bath video, but uh, this is uh, what the inside of it looks like. So again, you have your um, electrode that your part hangs off of. You have the electrodes on either side for the baskets. 
um, for your um, copper. And then at the bottom, you've got a hose coming down that goes into a spiral, and there's holes in this hose, and so I pump air through the hose, and that creates bubbles that come up through the bath, and that agitates the water and acts as a, a purging system, so that way I get uh, much more even electric play of parts. So then that hose comes out, and I can connect it to the aquarium pump that's on the electric playing bath. So uh, this seems to be a pretty good system that's worked uh, pretty well so far. And once you have the plating solution in your electroplating bucket, uh, we can go ahead and prepare the electroplating bath. If you haven't watched how uh, I have built my plating bath and you're interested to see how it works, uh, go ahead and click the video in the description. I'll put a note in the video as well that you can click on and you can see a little more closely as I explain how exactly this bath works. Uh, but to prepare the bath to uh, start plating, then we're going to fill it with water. Once it's filled with water, we will we'll put the plating bath in the water and allow both the heating bath and the uh, plating bath to begin to heat up. Uh, we're going to try and bring this solution up to 60 degrees Celsius. Now while we're waiting for that to heat up, uh, we'll go ahead and prepare the part that we're going to use as a test plate for the solution. The part we're going to be using is uh, something I 3D printed and it was actually a failed part. Uh, you can see there's a little notch missing on the side of the part uh, that didn't fully uh, cure um, for several, um, several layers during the print. And so we're going to paint this with a conductive uh, paint and then we're going to hang it in the bath and plate it with copper. We're going to do two layers of conductive paint on it. The first layer is going to be a base coat of carbon conductive paint. This just helps us make sure that the entire surface is covered with conductive paint and we don't have to go overboard with the more expensive nickel conductive paint that we'll be using next. And once that's dry, we will use the nickel conductive paint and put a final coat on that to have a very, very conductive uh, surface for our part. Then we'll use uh, the strands out of um, 18 gauge stranded uh, copper wire and we'll go ahead and strip that wire, pull the strands out and then we'll use those strands of wire to hang the part within a uh, frame and we'll suspend that frame within the bath. And then once we get our power supply hooked up, we will crank it up to about four amps and we'll let it run for several hours and see what happens. Now once the part's out, uh, we will uh, put it in a tumbler so that way we can get a nice shine on the part and get it ready for a final coat of polyurethane to finish it up. And after we get a nice coat of polyurethane on the part, uh, it has a brilliant shine to it. Uh, and that's really with the only post-plating processing being putting it in a tumbler, pulling it out, and giving it a coat of polyurethane. And it has a brilliant shine to it. There's also some other ingredients we can use for an electrolyte solution. Uh, a lot, one that most people use is uh, acetic acid, which is basically using vinegar and hydrogen peroxide to dissolve copper. And then that basically gives you a solution of acetic acid and uh, copper. And you can electroplate with that. Um, people have had mixed results. Uh, most times when people don't have good results, it's because they're using too high a current with the part. And uh, that comes from using too high of a voltage. And from what you can see in this video, it doesn't take much voltage with a highly conductive plating bath to get a lot of current. So 
Uh, usually one to two volts is more than enough to copper plate something. If not, then you might want to add a little bit of an acid to increase the conductivity of your bath. Another option for an acid, if you're looking for something a little safer than a car battery acid, is a citric acid. Citric acid is actually a stronger acid than vinegar. Uh, you can get uh, food grade citric acid crystals online. It's pretty easy to get, uh, and you can basically mix it in um, uh, instead of the uh, car battery acid, and you will get decent results. Uh, it, they're not going to be really great. Uh, you're not going to have as much throwing power because it's a much weaker acid, uh, but it will plate, and um, so it is an option. Uh, if you're trying to do just a home experiment, uh, you can do this instead, and then you don't have to worry about handling uh, harsh chemicals like battery acid. And with that, we've had a very successful first plate with our new copper electroplating solution. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot about how to build a copper plating solution. Uh, if you enjoyed watching the video, please give it a like. Uh, leave me a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. And feel free to share with your friends. It's a great science experiment. And also subscribe to my channel uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, to make sure you get updates on future videos that will be coming out. All right, here's the bonus round. Lots of pictures. Enjoy. There's a link to the gallery in the video description if you want to share with your friends. Or you can just share the video. Thanks for watching.